Hey, I'm Logan, and I'm here chatting with Milky. So when I was six years old, I discovered Michael Jackson, became obsessed with him and never stopped listening to him, never stopped watching him dance. And that's been my massive influence ever since I was a little boy. It led into hip hop and R&B and soul music. And so I got to find out who he looked up to, people like James Brown. So people that I looked up up to uh, are now like Michael, James Brown, Bill Withers, all just original 70s, 50s, 60s music, Elvis, people like that. Yeah, a lot of old school influence. So those are the people that, that really influenced me as an artist. Well, that song is a real funny one. We were, I went into the studio with uh, my producer, Tony Buchan. We were going back to record the song that we did the day before and a package arrived and it was from from Roland I think and it was like a little like organ and he just jammed on it for like a whole hour and I was like when are we gonna start working on this you know song that we did yesterday and then he goes and I was like oh my god put that down and we just wrote we just wrote because it was he just put this little line down and we just had to write this whole song out of it and so you know in the process famous for me like writing what like what is that song about to me well it's a bit of a split thing to me it's like what most would hear from that song is this very confident why don't they treat me like I'm famous and that sounds kind of you know cocky but for me you know the split meaning and you hear it in the verses is actually quite a self-deprecating song and it's very like I feel misunderstood song or I feel looked over song so it's like this it's a bit of a split song it's very confident I don't lack confidence but I'm also sometimes like fuck like why am I not doing better than than then well, like, you know, I thought I'd be further along in this career of music and things. And I think a lot of a lot of artists feel that way. They feel like they've got something that the world hasn't seen. So I think it speaks to that feeling. And yeah, that's what Famous is about for me. You'll hear after the first chorus, there's like this telephone synth sound that just buzzes out and it's my favorite part of the song it's also my favorite part of the live show i always break down do some dance moves to that part that's my favorite part of it i just did a take and he has this little box tony has this box and he used his thumb to play on this little like synth box and he put it up to the mic and he recorded it right after my take so that's ingrained in my mind that part of the song so it's a very visual favorite for me I don't know if I've even crafted it. I feel like uh, I've just been very open what the universe kind of wants me to do along with my inner child. People that I look to, like up to as a, as a kid are in my bones. Those songs that I loved and grew up with are in my bones. So it's a bit of a mix for up above and nostalgia. So I don't feel that I have any part in crafting my music other than just being very accepting of what's inside and what is beyond. Yeah, well that, you know, creating a distinct feeling uh, has also been a very natural flow as well. It's the same thing of just what's inside of me and what's beyond and being very accepting. It's all the same to me, but the doing of that clip was, you know, I really don't like to take, <laughs> I feel like, so cliche saying this but i don't like to take myself too seriously i think i like to take the process and the writing and the carefulness and the thoughtfulness of music i like to take that part serious but when it comes to doing a music video i couldn't imagine being like i'm gonna be so emotional in this video like i just want to have fun i want to put on a bunch of costumes dance around like an idiot and just and, ha and have a lot of laughs so that's what we did i work with a a man named uh, Levi Cranston on that, a very amazing director from south of Sydney, I believe. And we filmed it in this beautiful theatre named uh, Anita. I think it's in Kayama. It's a beautiful old theatre there. And um, yeah, we filmed it all inside of that place. And uh, the process was just have a lot of fun, to be honest. We had no lead up, really. We had a couple of calls, but he was like, hey, man, just be 
ready to rock up and like really freestyle for the day and i was like cool so that is my flavor entirely it's how i like to write songs is just off the top whatever comes comes and it was the same in that music video so a beautiful process doing the famous music video for me i try to mix it up consciously try to mix it up you know i always maybe there's things like i love to have a shower before i make music because i feel like i have a lot to wash off before i do that i also like to put on james brown and just really like get into like a place mentally there's a freedom of listening to james brown that that gives me the the right to make music every time and i feel like those are the only things i do maybe sometimes i really love this is going to be weird for anyone but i love to have a very random hat on underwear socks and shoes i write music in my bedroom so no one can see me and i'm allowed to be half naked writing my music and that is is one of the most beautiful pathways that i take and then sometimes it's like i'm gonna dress up like i'm about to go and perform so there's no process i like to switch it up as often as i can and uh the process is no process <laughs> what can they expect i hope they don't expect anything <laughs> i hope they don't expect anything uh, but if they do, I'll probably end up moving my feet just a little bit and I'll probably end up singing some songs. I think that's all I want anyone to expect from me. In saying that, all of those shows are very enticing for me and I am very excited to play those shows. It's going to be super fun. I can't believe, you know, I'd, I've, I've played seven shows now and there's so much booked and it's all so exciting. I feel so grateful for all of the things that I've been booked on and it's pretty unbelievable, you know. It's it's all started, take out, it took off um, in August with Pacific Avenue. Shout out Pacific Avenue. And uh, it's been amazing. We've booked cool stuff and I just can't wait to perform more because I'm so addicted to the feeling. Like I'm right now, I'm feeling jittery right now because I just can't wait to get back up there. So thanks for reminding me of... All of these um, beautiful shows coming up, it's going to be super fun. There is uh, so much in the future, to be honest with you. A, a big amount of dreams in the future for me, so it's really just working towards them. But for the now, we have more singles coming out in the coming months. We've got the first mixtape coming out in 2024. We are right now, I'm in Sydney to um, record the second mixtape. So that's coming out at some point. So there's there's a, a lot in the lineup, so much to look forward to. And you know, we just have so much music that we wanna put out. So we're just working towards everything and, and getting ready to put, put music out, play shows right now. Of course, I'm, you know, recording, but next week I'm playing shows and I'm playing shows for the rest of the year. Probably write some more music from the bedroom. Always working on something. That's the future for me. Jackson. Tyler the Creator or Pharrell. Blonde. Tattooed on my thigh. I mean, that is not a rapid fire type of question. That is crazy question. <laughs> you know what would be cool is if I got like a step up three dope dance song that they did a full set to. That would have been cool. That moose part where he pops all the bubbles in that scene. If anyone's seen Step Up 3, I'd like to be... I, I wish I was that song. 
I'm thinking about um, how I can be better in that moment. Miley Cyrus is pretty damn cool and I like her music a lot. Ben by Michael Jackson or The Way You Make Me Feel by Michael Jackson. John Mayer. No, Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. I think seeing Tyler the Creator is pretty damn crazy. Blonde. I'd rather be a Spice Girl. Well, I have a nickname. It's called Baby Blue. Baby Blue. It would be pretty crazy if Pharrell <laughs> just... <laughs> If ever there was like a ballad that I put out and he liked it and he just did his own like little piano ballad himself. Oh no, I don't want anyone to cover my music. I want nobody to cover. Not because I think they would do it bad. I just, I feel like, I don't know that. Let's say that I have no answer on this. I have no clue. I have no clue. How about like your dream location? Madison Square Garden. I actually don't like karaoke. It kind of annoys me. <laughs> I know, no, I mean, no, no bad energy towards karaoke. Uh, my favorite song would be like Peso by ASAP Rocky. On the music industry, I think Michael Jackson. Well, I would just be like, man, I hope you are fucking working hard. I hope you're working hard. <laughs> I don't know. I hope I hope I'm working hard always. I believe I will be, but if this has to be a reminder, well, I'll let that be known. Music means to me like once again, I think for me, music is the is the the balance between the universe or god or any any source energy and nostalgia it's what what lives inside of you and what lives completely outside of you meeting each other rock with you michael jackson I don't know if there was ever a time I just feel like I'd came out the womb knowing that that's what I wanted to be. I, do, I don't recall a time where I was like, this is what I want to do. It was always what I wanted to do. Ever since I was a little, little baby boy, I think I was just singing in, in my mum's um, backseat. You know, what, what do they call it? The baby seat? Just in the baby seat, apparently I used to sing a lot, so I think even before I can remember, I always wanted to do it.